Well, today we're doing three spring decoupage art crafts as part of my chatting and crafting series, which is a series where we mostly use TDS products from the DIYstruggle.com. And if you don't want to use TDS products, don't worry, I won't take offense to it. The cool thing about this series is these tips and tricks using decoupage, napkins, and papers. They're going to help you along your DIY journey, no matter what kind of paper you're crafting with. You can grab tags from Dollar Tree, Walmart, Hobby Lobby. Michaels has these. They're all really inexpensive. It just depends on where you pick them up. This little piece right here, I am not sure where I grabbed it from, but we're going to decoupage it. For our decoupage medium, we're just going to be using some matte Mod Podge. This is the spring is in the air design, and this has all the spring feels. There's so many different designs to choose from on here. Absolutely love this piece, and it's the one we're going to be working with today. I do have two other spring designs. One is called Spring and Easter Blessings, which is absolutely gorgeous as well. And one I know for sure that I have a video planned on is gonna be featuring these egg wraps. I already grabbed some eggs from Dollar Tree. That video is already in the plans. I want to be able to use as much of this paper as possible. So I'm gonna take a little bit of water on a paintbrush and just get a real detailed trim around where I want to tear. For the tag, I want to use this little decorative piece right here. However, I'm going to have to disconnect this bird cage and reattach it in a different spot because it won't fit on there. So I'm going to have to finagle it to make it work for how I want it to fit on the tag. I traced out the whole design that I want to keep and now I'm just going to kind of disconnect the house so we can reattach it in another spot. So our design pops on the tag. We're going to give it a nice coat of this DIY paint and it's in the white swan. It works really well. I am fairly new to this paint and loving it more and more every time I use it. Sammy over at Unicorn Dust Design sells it in case you're interested. I do keep a link down in the description box. Please keep in mind that if you do not want to purchase TDS decoupage paper, you can take any of these ideas, tips, or information in the series in general. I keep it in a playlist and use to recreate whatever decoupage projects work for you. I also have tons of napkin decoupage DIYs. I love using napkins as well. Napkin bundles and the TDS decoupage paper that you will see me use in this series can all be purchased at the DIYstruggle.com. You're all dried up. And if you're new to decoupage and you're wondering why we paint it, it's because it helps the design pop. If you just leave the piece neutral, which you can absolutely do, you will see the grains of the wood in the backgrounds. A lot of the TDS decoupage paper designs, I try to keep fairly neutral. So if you don't want to paint them, you can really make these look like they are right on the wood. And I've shared several projects like that as well. But today we're using the white paint in this cute little design. And look how adorable the little bunny is looking up at the bike because he wants to get on there. <laughs> Sorry. Having a moment. I decided I'm going to take a couple bushes out. Okay. We will not notice these bushes are missing. But I don't want to take the handle out. So let's move this down a smidge. Then we should be able to line this up a little bit better. There. There, perfect, fabulous. Okay, now let's get the rest of this off. Just trim it to your paper and we should be able to get this right on here. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you can make it as perfect as you want, but let me tell you how to DIY your own decoupage art. I'm just telling you, I'm not stressing it because this piece is gonna go over this piece. You feel me? For my application, I'm just gonna use a fan brush. If you're not familiar with me, I like to use fan brushes with tissue paper and with actual napkins. For me, they're just thinner 
than regular paint brushes. So when you get your application on here, and if you wanna go around the edges, they're easy to apply. Stick a little bit of Mod Podge in there, X, Y, and Z. If you wanna do the iron-on method for any of these projects, which will give you an amazing, flawless, I know a lot of people hate wrinkles in their decoupage. I gotta be honest with you, I'm a huge vintage fan. So wrinkles really never bother me. It does trip me out though in the comments when I see people and they're like, oh, how can you handle those wrinkles? It looks da 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 da. Listen, it's a preference. You know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. If you don't like them, that's fine. But, you know, stop being so critical on my wrinkles. I like them. They add some character, okay? Character. So I'm just shoving this under here and making sure it's on there. And in case you're like, Brandy, why aren't you just putting it all over the whole thing? I am not that person, okay? It is some projects I have done that before where I will put it all over the whole thing and then try to press it. It usually does not work out for me. So going little by little tends to work better for me. And then I'll just apply and move forward adding a little bit more and then a little bit more and then a little bit more. I would love to know where all my sponges have disappeared to. I'm not sure what I've done with them. This is literally, I have this like, <laughs> this is a dry sponge people. It's a dry kitchen sponge, right? And I like to hold one to them and use them because they help you press down on napkins and decoupage paper without really having a lot of wrinkles. And yes, cling wrap works really well, but I also, oh, that bunny wasn't laying there right. <sighs> Do I want a chance pulling this all the way up? I don't want to. All right, we're just gonna have his ear cut out. It's okay. You guys place yours a little bit more carefully. I don't want to. The bottom is already sticky and sticky, so I don't want to pull it back up. Don't want to pull it back up and then chance ripping the whole piece. Anyway, back to my sponge. <laughs> like, this is a dry sponge, and I like using these to help apply napkins and tissue paper because it's really thin so it's just an easy way to like not have to deal with tearing your paper other than cling wrap and yes cling wrap works as well but sometimes cling wrap gets because especially with a tissue like those pores it will come up and get all stuck in there right and this kind of catches it and then when these get crusty you see how this is all cut up <laughs> and then, like repurpose it and use it for paint and I think this has been used to death, but is what it is. This is just about dry, but I want to give y'all a little tip real quick. I get asked very often if you should put a layer of Mod Podge over it as you go. I'm going to tell you that personally, I feel like this is depending on your comfort level with decoupage mediums. And I say this because... I have seen people decoupaging that do this all the time and as they're applying it, they're going right over it. I never do that. And that is because in my experience, even with furniture pieces and all the things I've decoupaged, any time that I've put tissue paper, napkins, thicker paper on top of something, and unless it's tiny little sections, like super, super small little pieces, if I go over it at the same time I'm applying it, it's super wet underneath. And then I'm taking another soppy layer of wetness, putting it on top, and it just creates more bubbles. So for me, I kind of like to see what happens when I just let the piece dry and then come back a couple hours later or come back the next day and see how it's dried. Sometimes there might be little pops of air bubbles and then you can take a little tiny pin and you can pop them and then press them down, apply a little bit of Mod Podge and you're good to go. To fill this in, we're going to just take a stencil and you can grab any stencil you want and we're going to just kind of place it over the space. We're going to create 
a raised texture look using some of Tim Holtz Distressed Texture Paste. But I want to add some color to this, and it's super simple. I'm just going to take, you know, something blank to be able to pop this on. We're going to put a little bit of our medium on here and smoosh it together with some green. I'm placing this slightly over the torn pieces, so this way it kind of all blends together. And just center it according to what makes sense for you, and then just gently place it over top of the stencil. Feel free to add whatever finishing touches to any of these projects you want. I kept it pretty simple for this entire video, and if you want to seal over any of them, wait until the next day. I painted up our little block decor pieces white already, so they are ready to be Mod Podged. I'm going to use our bees for our little square pieces, but I want to try and get these on here in a way. All right, I think that's good. like the white popping through here we will fix that in a little bit so in the event that you're like brandy that doesn't match we're gonna fix it my friends we're gonna fix it i'm gonna throw a nice little layer of mod podge just on this whole side over here and then we will apply on the other side That was super easy. And another thing I love about this paper is you actually don't have to use tools. You can just glide your finger right on over this sucker and it just presses down with really minimal wrinkles. As you can see here, like it's like nothing. This one's also going to have a little gap right there with the color. We will definitely adjust for that. are all dry and it's a good idea to make sure that you allow these to dry before you go sanding or using your burn method whatever you decide to use to get your extra bits off around the corners and feel free like if you got a sharp edge right there you want to blend in more just take your sandpaper right on over the paper it's just going to give it more of a natural worn look and it will blend in even better. We're going to create another raised stencil and I'm just going to use the same texture paste and we're only going to put this in the little tiny spots that we see here that are missing. I'm going to use some, what color should we use? Maybe some purple since we got some pops of purple. The purple added just the perfect touch for these little pieces and people feel free to remix these ideas, finish them up however you want, add your waxes, add your sealers. Wanted to keep these nice and basic just to give you an original starting point idea. Dollar Tree sells these beautiful signs. They are extremely high end looking on their own if you ask me. I've done different crafts with these before. But today, we're not going to use this side at all. We're going to use the back. And I've already painted it white. I'm trimming down this beautiful springtime clock. And as much of around it as I can, the design's intact. And just move on with using this design.
this piece fits on here almost perfectly. We are going to have to make a couple adjustments. Just this way it all looks fairly similar. I'm going to start from the top and then just work my way down little by little. same thing with this piece that we did with the other ones and add a stencil to cover over these gaps. I'm going to use this one, mind it. It's been used a couple times. It hasn't been cleaned. Okay, stop judging me. Okay, if you don't have any dirty stencils in your stash, you're doing all right because <laughs> I definitely got some dirty ones in mine. All right, a little bit of our texture paste. Don't need a lot. Well, for this one, we might need a little bit more than I used before so it's it might be too much it might be too much I'm gonna try and pop this on here and don't be afraid you know what I'm saying like to kind of put this and just pray <laughs> be afraid to just put it here and pray all right because that's what I'm gonna do listen at the end of the day all right at the end of the day doesn't have to be perfect all right, we're just making something we love and that's it. That's all that really matters. Trying to match up all the gaps here, at least as much as I can. And my blue, I don't think matches anything, but whatever. We're here now, I'm not wasting my texture paste, that's all I got. And for covering up these spots, I really wanted to share with you all that you could just leave all the spots you want and then just texture right over it given your decoupage art a whole new level of pretty all right let's see what has happened <laughs> let's see what's transpired under here oh it's pretty it turned out really good okay we're gonna have to fill that gap over there but for right this minute Super happy with that. All right, we're gonna do the same thing over here. Oh, that turned out so good. I'm so happy with this. We're gonna continue to just plop some spots down though couple of spots here. As always, people, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed all these decoupage DIYs. And until next time.